Hey, I'm Kelsey, creator of the InDesign Field Guide, and in this video, I'm going to show you two ways to style a drop cap in Adobe InDesign. Let's go! First things first, drop caps are the larger first letter or first words that you can use at the start of a paragraph to denote a new chapter in a book or a start of an article in a magazine or a blog. I have two favorite ways to style a drop cap. The first is applying a drop cap to just the first letter of the first word of a paragraph, like this here. And the second is applying a drop cap to the first several words of a paragraph like this here. So I'm going to show you how to do both today. So first up, applying a drop cap to just the first letter of the first word. For this option, it's easiest to use InDesign's built-in drop cap tool. So I'll show you how to use that. But before we get to that tool, first we're going to make a quick character style to use for that single letter that will become our drop cap. I have some sample text here that I'll use so you can see all of this in context. So first I'll open up the character styles flyout menu here. If you don't see that on your window, you can go to window styles and toggle on character styles right here. Click the little plus sign right here to create a new style that's added to your list. And we'll double click that to make edits to that style. For my drop caps, I like to use a typeface that contrasts well against the body text of the paragraph. Now I'm using Minion for the body text here, which is a nice classic serif font. So for the drop cap, I'm gonna choose a crisp, clean, sans serif like Brandon Grotesque. I also like to make it a tiny bit thinner in weight since this single letter will end up being pretty large on the page compared to everything else. And this helps balance it out with the body text and not feel too in your face like, whoa, drop cap. Don't worry about setting the sizing since that will be changing automatically with the drop cap tool here in a sec. We'll name this style cleverly drop cap and click OK. Then I'm going to double click inside my text box and just place my cursor anywhere in that first paragraph where I want the drop cap to appear. Then I'm going to go to the paragraph flyout menu. If you're not seeing this one here, you can go to window, type and tables and toggle on paragraph. Then select this four bar drop down here and select drop caps and nested styles. Now you can find the same tool inside of a paragraph style which was a similar window to the character style window we just had open where we selected our brand and grotesque font. And when you're working on a real project, I definitely recommend setting up a paragraph style for your drop caps so you can be sure that they're all consistent throughout your entire project. But for this demo, I'm just gonna show you the same menu right here in the paragraph window. It's all the exact same. So in here, we're just gonna change three things. I'm just looking at these things up here. The number of lines that our drop cap is showing. I usually go with two or three. So one line is just showing it as a regular capital letter in that line of text. Two lines, you can see, bumps it to take up two lines of space. Three lines takes up three lines, and so on. I have preview checked over here so I can see my changes live on my document as I make them in this window. I always recommend turning that on. The characters field we will leave as one because this shows that it just applies to the very first character, that letter N. And then the last thing is the character style, and we're going to select the style that we just created, drop cap. And voila, our drop cap is looking good. I click OK. So that's a really simple way to create your drop cap automatically. Now, if it feels like your drop cap is too close to your paragraph text, you can place your cursor right there in between, go to the character flyout menu, and then you can increase the kerning, which is right here. If you hover over it, you'll see it's labeled as kerning. You can, as I increase this, you can see that all three of those lines of text are scooting over together, and that just gives it a little bit more breathing room. So sometimes I do like to add that between the drop cap and the start of the paragraph. So my second favorite way to style a drop cap is applying it to the first several words of the paragraph, not just the first letter. So we're gonna scroll down here, we've got some more text. And for this style, it can tend to be easiest to create a character style again for the text formatting, just like we did with the last one but not necessarily use that official drop cap tool. Since we want to do the first few words, the character count is going to vary depending on the text of the paragraph, right? So we can't really set a specific number of characters because that might cut off in the middle of a word. We don't want that. So this one makes more sense to apply manually just with a dedicated character style. So we'll create our style in the same way. We'll go to our character styles flyout menu. I'll click the plus sign to add a new one to my list and I'll double click it so I can make changes to it. I'll name this drop cap 2. So clever. And for this style, I think it looks nice to use the same typeface as the body text, but make it small caps and give it a bit more character spacing. So we'll select Minion as our font family to match. 
So the size out here in my paragraph is 12, so I'm gonna select 10, so it's a couple points smaller because this is gonna be all caps, so we wanna select all caps. There is a small caps option, but sometimes the automated small caps don't always look quite right because it really just depends on the shapes of the letter forms themselves and the font that you're using. That helps determine the size and the spacing that looks best as small caps, so doing them automatically can sometimes give you weird results. So I'll just select all caps, and I will add a little bit of tracking, about 50. So I'll click OK. I'll come down here to my second example paragraph. And let's just apply it to these few words right here. I'll highlight the text I want to apply my new drop cap style to, and I'll select that style in my menu. It will automatically apply all of that formatting to that text. The last thing to note about this way of using drop caps is you want to keep the amount of horizontal space that the drop cap is taking up. You want that to be roughly the same every time you use the drop cap style. So, so just take note of about where on the page this is landing because you don't want one chapter to have just a couple of words and the next chapter to have an entire line of words. You want those to be fairly consistent even if they're not exactly the same. Also, the last thing I'll note is drop caps are typically never indented. They're always fully left aligned unless it's like a super dramatic editorial spread where you can kind of take some liberties with alignment. For the most part, when you use a drop cap, do not indent it, make sure it's fully left aligned. So there you have it. That's my two favorite ways to style a drop cap. If you want more Adobe InDesign training, watch my free workshop where I break down the most popular design apps and programs and show you when it's best to use each one. Psst, you can do way more with InDesign than you probably realize. Plus, I'll walk through exactly how to design a PDF worksheet and promo graphic from start to finish using only InDesign. Click that first link in the description below to watch the free workshop right now. Go ahead, click it. You know you want to.